just for anyone who doesn't know, I know it's very few of you, we'll be talking about Sentai. Not Dentai. <laughs> if you notice, in, I don't know if you saw in some of the schedules, like the paper free one, it said Nobu Sugimura <laughs> from Lupin to Super Dentai and beyond. So I was thinking about making a joke in my intro if I didn't want to spend two and a half hours re-rendering re the file and having the S cross out and a D take its place. <laughs> because they, I don't know how they screwed it up, but guidebook seemed to be fixed, the printed uh, description seemed to be fixed, but not the schedule itself. And, and also we can, and also you think these people who work with Sentai Filmworks would probably fix that. Crap, I don't remember how the lights work over here. Oh. Let me try that real quick. Work with light magic. <laughs> Not car magic? Nope. No, not car magic. We need to do not car magic. You know what you're saying? How does it work? Ugh. Are those shoes dark? Why did I order this? Of course, all of them. It's all or nothing, apparently. Yeah. You're in or you're out. Just leave. Marcus, stop touching the lights. Leave it. I can't. Alright, we'll just have to go with that later. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> really, you don't want to sit he is your husband. We'll save that for later, dude. Alright. So, let's first play the intro to this panel. <laughs> Sigamora before. Probably you have. Some of you might have you've seen my reviews. I have a YouTube channel where I do Sentai Kamen Rider Godzilla reviews on. So Sugimura is kind of a mysterious figure. There's nothing recorded that I could find online at all about his life before 1975. Sugimura in 1975 started working as an apprenticeship under a man who was working on this crime drama series called Bark at the Sun. He then learned from this guy how to do, crime, how to do a lot of crime dramas and would eventually go on to work on a couple episodes in this one little crime series called Lupin the Thirds Part 2. Now with Sugimura, he's got some interesting dynamics to his storytelling because clearly he knows how to do crime drama. The man also loves horror. As you, you will see in a lot of his foot, a lot of the footage I have here, he he seems to be a master at horror. And sometimes I feel like the episodes for Sentai and Kamen Rider that he does that are horror related, they feel like they could that he was the Japanese equivalent to John Carpenter. Uh, also, he loves science fiction, so his plots will have either aliens in it or just monsters that can be science fiction based, which is interesting because in one of his first episodes, uh, actually I guess it's more like his seventh episode of Lupin the Third, this episode covers all three aspects. あの、トライアングル。うんとっとんな。変異不明で船が沈んだり、飛行機が落ちる場所なんでしょ。そうさ、ひょっとしたら幽霊人が出てくるかもしれない。怖がることはねえよ。ただの乱暴人じゃねえ
るだろうっていうのは宇宙人との接触のことだったんだよじゃあストーンヘンジはやっぱり宇宙人が作ったものだはい。There's been a couple live action series, seasons, and a couple live action adaptations, and yet I don't think any of them has ever actually been brought to America. But the translation from what I've seen, the name actually is Yo Yo Cop Girl. Good. <laughs> well then. And this series continued on with his little crop, with Sugimura's crime drama aspect. Oh yeah, and just so you know, the file I had was raw, so I created my own subtitles. Oh, oh boy! Yeah. Yeah, wait to see what you this is what I always. We should call. We should to. call it bad subtitle reading. <laughs> <laughs> you read it out loud. Yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. You said, "Shot." Then I went to the show on the other. Easy. Ten thousand yen. Ten thousand yen. Ten thousand yen. Ten thousand yen. 今日からお前の武器だ Two seasons, and then Toei did this series called *Common Rider Black* in 1987, which was what has some significance because it was the only *Common Rider* Showa show that he didn't. The *Common Rider* didn't get any help from any of the previous writers. And he Kotaro did the started the series off on his own and ended the series on his own. Now, *Common Rider Black* suffered from some writing issues. That occurred in the beginning of the show. These two writers teamed up to write the show. They had a disagreement about something, so the main writer quit the show, leaving them in a bind. After I think it was like episode nine. So that if you've watched Black, there's a reason why Shadow Moon, who's hint talked about at the beginning, takes to episode 34 before he's introduced. Well, Noboru Sugimura wrote a few episodes throughout the series in the early days. And then, when they decided to bring Shadow Moon in, he took over as head writer and wrote most of the Shadow Moon episodes. 
and there are quite a few episodes in that in those arcs that deal with cops or the monsters attacking people the regular citizens instead of trying to be hidden away trying to attack just children they go out all out on attacking other people too <laughs> So, Kamen Rider Black was was also at, actually it probably still well, kind of. It was the only Kamen Rider series to have a true sequel after its name, which was Kamen Rider Black RX, which continued the story. But this time, aliens came to Earth, and Black's powers had to be upgraded, which is what Saban, which is the series Saban used to make Mask Rider in the nineties. <clears throat> we forget that happened. Wait, what happened? With Warrior <laughs> Commander and <laughs> Skyrider as Amazon? Did Sugimura still own the Rx or did, oh, did they uh, change no. the rank now? No. Sugimura did not stay on for Black Rx. In 1989, Toei decided, you know what, they, well, they had, in the early 80s, they established a series called Metal Heroes, yeah. which had started off with a space sheriff who would hunt down criminals called Gavin. They followed it up with two successor shows, Tried some new stuff, uh, Metalder, I want to say... The Spielbaum part of it? I want, I want to say Spielbaum yes. was in Spielbaum there. Was in the and then, in the late 80s, some big movie came on America, or Big's kind of oversaying it, but a popular movie came out with a cop who gets pretty much murdered and is brought back as a robot. Mm -hmm. Robocop. Japan loved this idea. So Toei had Sugimura rip this idea off for their, for, for their next Metal Hero show, which is, some translations say it's called Mobile Cop Jiban, or others say it's Tactical Officer Jiban, about a cop who had to be reconstructed into a cyborg. And the interesting aspect on this show is you actually don't see him transform into his human form until the end of the episode. So the entire first episode looks like it's actually just a robot fighting criminals. So I have a clip here from that. That's for you. Serve the public trust, protect the 
actually fully saw that series beyond two episodes. Ah, I don't see why not. There's so many other series out there that nobody has time for, really. Unfortunately. Then again, I can't find other interests other interest in past episode 13. I can help you out with that later. Please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now, one thing you might also notice, it's kind of hard to, to exactly put into words, but Sugimura series, the way they're filmed, have, an, have a kind of a unique style to them. They have a similar lighting that kind of gives some of them a noirish feel without being noir. Also, the way he does camera angles, the way the, the film, the episode series look kind of dirty in a way. And this is something apparent, especially if you've seen the Sentais of June Ranger, Die Ranger, Cock Ranger, O Ranger, you might have noticed. It's hard to exactly describe, but when I watch a show, I can usually tell when it's Sigamora's work, signature work, because it feels like a Sigamora show. So, with that said, though, after G-Bon, Toei wanted him to take his crime drama, put it with the Metal Hero series, but ground it in reality. So he created a show called Wind Specter, which would feature a team of cops who would take, uh, take part in specialized cases, if there's like someone trying to blow up something up, which there's a lot of plots about bombs in the series. Uh, cyborgs, Terminators. Um, there's one episode that's really interesting where he fights a woman who kidnaps children and drains their life so that she can stay young forever. And she's over 100 years old. And it really gives uh, Wind Spectre Fire a run for his money because his... The pro one, one negative side of this show is whenever he, he'll put on his suit, but it, sometimes it feels like overkill, like when he's taking out bank robbers. Does he really need a robot suit for this? <laughs> so sometimes it can be a little bit overkill, but they wanted to keep it grounded in reality. As much as possible, because how the hell is a hundred year old woman in reality? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly in reality. Japan. Yeah, Japan. <laughs> and there were, they also have robots with them, which are named Baiko and Walter, and then a female cop who was up hired because she had, was a great marksman. So I have here a little bit of cl a little clip from the series. <laughs> Yeah. 
Alright, now it was actually tempting to use a Terminator joke in there. I was like, I have to resist. Can't keep, keep doing everything. <laughs> now, another interesting thing about Wind Spectre, you might have noticed if you've watched some Sentai, the commander from All Ranger is in that show. He's the commander in both Wind Spectre and its sequel series because Toei loves Miyagi. Yes. He was big one in Jacka, and they use him whenever they can. Wasn't he also someone else in the, in the, suit, in the Sentai series? Yes, he was... was he... no, not Aka Ranger. Now I can't remember. Was he Our Ranger? That was a different guy, I think. No, not, not in Jetman. He was in one of the earlier, like the 70s he, he stuff. Was, he was in Go Ranger, I know. Yes. Wait, I can't remember, remember if he was Aka Ranger I can't remember or... if he I was, was Blue. Al, I think it was Owl Ranger. He was either Blue... Oh, Owl, I thought you said Owl. Owl. No, no, I said Owl Ranger. Yeah, Owl, like blue for Blue. Movies. And uh, then he was also uh, Kaketsu Zubat, was it? Yes. Awesome. Now, another interesting thing about Wind Spectre is usually in a Toku show you have a centralized villain who sends out these criminals, monsters, what have you. Hmm. Wind Spectre is different as it's pretty much a different criminal each episode or per two-parter. So there's really no villains to get attached to, which can be a negative side. A negative. On the other hand, the show does also have a lot of social issues talked about. There's one episode in particular uh, the Walter and Baiko had a third brother that was built that was pretty much at the FBI asked, hey, can we have one of your robots to protect America? So they sent him out. Well, Japan had these nice, friendly robots who kids could love just as much as they were effective in crimes. America has to be America. Of course. Oh, no. <laughs> どうだ。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと
She, they needed to get a blood transfusion. Well, the, her father owns a corporation who made this, who was ke uh, dumping chemicals illegally. The, the driver got sick from it, so his daughter kid, takes, kidnap, or steals the blood that is needed to, trans uh, to give his, save his daughter, and they're like, well, where, I mean, where's the blood, where's the blood? And the daughter says, I will give it to you if you finally admit your crimes and help cure my father. And the father says, I'm not going to risk my company for that. <laughs> wow. But here are some clips from Winspector. Or Solvering. Soul Brain, I wish I was watching Win Spectre instead. <laughs> so, Win Spectre, the main character, Yoma, who's Win Spectre Fire, is kind of as ex interesting as a box of rocks. Oh, no. ow. The two robots, Baiko and Walter, especially Baiko, who is voiced by the guy that does Tacklebot in Dune Ranger, they have a person, they have personality, and Baiko is what really sells the show. And also, I do give it a lot of credit for trying something new with not doing a reoccurring villain. So the execution is pretty well done. That keeps the show interesting, despite the main character's lackluster traits. So far in Soul Brain, I would rather be watching I mean, just looking at a forest because they are less wooden than these characters. <laughs> oh. Can't see the forest of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> so now there was a third series that came out after Soul Brain. That, so they started calling this the Rescue Police Trilogy. That series brought in aliens and went back more to the normal toku roots, which Sugimura did not do because Sugimura was asked to revitalize a near-dead franchise, oh Super Sentai. In the 80s, Super Sentai was pretty much, the head writer was a guy named Soda, who pretty much wrote all the series from 81, to 1990 when he ended his run with Five Man. Toei didn't know what to do at that point. They were thinking about canceling the show, but they got another uh, guy to write the next series that decided to do a little tribute to Gachaman with Jetman. Yes. Jetman kind of saved the show, but they still didn't know what to do with the franchise. So they asked Sugimura to test out the waters, try something new. So he decided, let's go with dinosaurs, Let's do a fantasy setting, but in the modern day. And let's do a lot of horror. <laughs> so their monsters are created off mythology. Bandora, or if you know Power Rangers, Rita. She is basically an evil witch that made a deal with Satan. And her job, and she wants to kill all the children in the world because her son was killed by a T-Rex. Uh, the things you do for the deals with the devil. <laughs> So this series was, a, was kind of a test to see what would happen. 
But the scenes I picked really do show Sugimura's love for horror. Oh boy. mythology, Die Ranger, which is my personal favorite Sentai series. This one, he did a uh, Sugimura did a lot of more experimentation with using everyday objects, although I think that's been used before, but he used everyday objects. He did a ch uh, Chinese mythology about a lot of yin and yang. The villains and heroes are pretty much like the force and the dark side. They always have to coexist. So these clips here deal with a cop, and if you've ever seen Kyoruger, you might recognize the voice of the main, uh, villain in this, Kabuki Boy. So yeah, Kabuki Boy could take over my, uh, people's bodies, so Sugimura kind of showed a little bit of his crime drama aspects in that two-parter, while keeping everything on with the Chinese mythology. If you have never seen Die Ranger, it is a show that's built on subplots that really build up to the main plot at the end of the series. Every ranger gets their own story, whether it's one arc that starts in like episode 9 and lasts throughout the entire series, or ones that might start in episode 27 that lasts to about episode 40. Either way, the show, if you've never seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. My second favorite Sentai series is known as Copter Ranger, which is about ninjas in the modern day fighting yokai. And I have here, so, in this aspect, some ways you could look at it. The Kaku Rangers are ninjas. A lot of the yokai in the beginning, they're just trying to live out daily lives, whether it's being a taxi driver, one wants to just play video games, 
Some are just wanting to play games with each other, these two brothers. One's a cop. They're not bothering anyone. So we have these guys that are like, well, we're ninjas, so we're going to come in and kick your asses. But, of course, they're evil because they're monsters. Right. So here's a little clip from Kakuri. That's racist. <laughs> That's profiling. series for Sentai, so they started to do this show called O-Ranger. It was meant to be a, a callback to the militaristic Sentai series of the 70s and 80s, be super serious and dark. The Machine Empire comes, the first episode of the Machine Empire comes to Earth and starts conquering it. Japan is like the only country left in the world that has not been conquered. Well, in Japan, an earthquake occurred, and then there was also the sarin gas attacks in the subway. So they had them dial back the show and put it into a silly aspect at times, which kind of makes the tone jarring. Sugimura wrote an episode in the, in the early 30s, which is considered to be one of the darkest Sentai episodes of all time. And here's a few clips, which I think you can figure out why. Oh boy. <laughs> That monster was not used in Power Ranger Zeo. I can understand why. It's also actually an episode where they don't even use the mechs at all in this ep in it. So that also helps it because as much as I love mecha, sometimes mecha battles and Sentai can get tiring when they're happening every episode. <clears throat> Especially today, I feel like Toei must feel, well, if we don't have the mech in an episode, children suddenly aren't going to want to buy the toys. So here's a little Soul Brain All Ranger connection for two, one episode from each series where the plot is pretty similar and even some of the dialogue seems to be identical. Oh boy. <laughs>
れねむぜいいか二度と起きないように元気を完成させるんだお前たちはそのためのモルモットだよグラケガを連れて逃げてください私は警察官です自分の中にいる生き物自分の力でやめるんだやめてくれお父ちゃんお父ちゃん死ぬつもりなんだああ<笑>
also, when he worked for Capcom, he also worked on some of the Clock Tower games. But he also, his other big significant game series before he passed away in 2005 was a trilogy based on Japanese history mixed with demons. <coughs> this series was called Onimusha, which was featured over, was during when Oda Nobunaga was, take, was pretty much trying to unify Japan by conquering it. And in this game series, they made the mindset that he joined with demons to have the power to do so. So here are a few clips from all three of those games. short lifetime. He short. God, in the 60s. <laughs> oh, you're the one that was like, but he was so young. <laughs> <laughs> so don't give me that. <laughs> I, 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 it would have been awesome to see what he could have done with today's Toku series if he had gone back in that realm, or even where the Resident Evil franchise and Onimusha, Onimusha franchises could have gone had he stayed around. Anyone have any questions? All right, then. Thank you for coming. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I hope to see you at my Ultraman panel tonight at 8 o'clock.